But energetically, we have this, you know, suitcase of unresolved emotions and lug it around with us. And every now and then, even without something setting us off external to ourselves, but it can be a thought, that suitcase will open and that stuff that we have suppressed can ooze on up and we can start reliving the emotions that we have not resolved, we haven't processed. And there's lots of reasons why we haven't processed them. A lot of the time it's because we're overwhelmed and we didn't know what to do with them. Insight and Awareness Spiritual Explorer Soul Intuitive, Emotional and Spiritual Mentor and award-winning author Lorraine Nylon Welcome Explorers and thank you for being part of the adventure. Like and subscribe if you want more information about reconnecting with your soul, recovering from your wounds and rejuvenating your zest for life. Today I want to talk about triggers. Sarah, one of our fellow listeners, has actually sent me an email saying sometimes I don't even know why I'm triggered and what do you do when you are triggered? So she's just finished reading um, Spirituality, Evolution and Awakened Consciousness and she, what she loved from it was it gave her questions to ask herself when she felt triggered. So we're going to do a little exploration into triggers and why we are triggered. So when we're looking at triggers, what are they would be the first question. And basically they're an involuntary reaction and it recalls a traumatic experience. Or the other thing that it does is it has us running through a particular filter. So from our past, different things have happened and we've created these filters from them. And it's the way we start looking at them. Everyone has triggers we're all there's not a person on the planet that isn't triggered by something now how we deal with it is very different if someone is emotionally overwhelmed their ability to deal with a trigger is going to be very different to someone that has emotional intelligence and has realized that their past is now you know biting at their heels so to speak So when we are triggered, it can be, like I said, traumatic experiences, but it can also be fear-induced. We can play mind games with ourselves and sometimes what we fear happening, so we can fear being judged, you know, we can fear humiliation, which most of us do, all those kind of things. So we're, if we're having an experience and we feel start to feel nervous about something, we can start to fear that we're about to be humiliated or we just humiliated ourselves. And then that can cause us to have these big emotional reactions. Now, everyone's a little bit different to what can happen. Some people, it's a shutdown. They just switch off and they go internal and it's like they're held in a trance. Other people explode and they can act it out. They can be yelling at the dog or the children for nothing really. Yesterday, whatever you're yelling at today didn't bother you, but because you've been triggered about something else, you're actually trying to get that energy out and what you're doing is releasing it generally on somewhere you think is safe. So children have no power, they're safe. Animals, pets, and, you know, you hear the old expression, go and kick a tree, can't, do, can't kick you back. Triggers we have lots of different reactions and we can they can become habitual habits as well that when we're emotionally triggered that you know we go and eat or we go and drink or we you know look for a substance that is going to shut and numb us out so there's all different kinds of reactions that we can have to being emotionally triggered and if I go back to Sarah's question where she said, half the time I don't even know what triggered me. And that goes into a different kind of event as well. Whatever we don't really deal with, we don't escape. We suppress it. And in my words, and we're going to go into the spirituality side of it, is we hold it in our system 
and I refer to that as our soul's unconsciousness, so our emotional baggage. And look, there's belief systems, there's fears, there's mindsets, there's all. I mean, I know our brain is doing a lot of things as well, but energetically we have this, you know, suitcase of unresolved emotions and lug it around with us. And every now and then, even without something setting us off external to ourselves, but it can be a thought, that suitcase will open and that stuff that we have suppressed can ooze on up and we can start reliving the emotions that we have not resolved, we haven't processed. And there's lots of reasons why we haven't processed them. A lot of the time it's because we're overwhelmed and we didn't know what to do with them. When you go into shock, emotional shock, someone does or says something to you and you don't know how to respond, you don't know why they're doing it, all those kind of things, those why questions that we have, what that does is we start trying to avoid it. So we start pushing it away, pushing it away. And we might give ourselves a belief system to buy instead. So say someone hurt us and then we don't want to feel the hurt so we push it away, we suppress it, we put it in that suitcase and carry it. But of course we haven't processed it. We need to create a belief system for ourselves. So we'll can sometimes make up a story and they become the narrative that we tell ourselves. So when we get emotionally triggered, a lot of the time what upsets us is that we don't want that suitcase opened, Pandora's box. We don't want it open and we get agitated because whether it's external or even our own thoughts, we're kicking up what we're trying to avoid and a lot of the time when people are triggered and they're trying desperately to control their own avoidance you'll notice that they'll start sweating they can't sit still they'll be moving their body erratically all those kind of things and part of that is they don't know what to do with the energy they're feeling with the emotion that they're feeling. So they start panicking that they're going to be taken somewhere, even by themselves, that they don't want to have to confront what is left unresolved within them. So there's a lots of different ways that triggers affect us. The one that we mainly talk about is when we're triggered and we are reliving traumatic experiences. So it can be a sound, a smell, a word, could be anything along those lines that remind you of something that caused you trauma previously. And when we're looking at trauma, the event, you know, and ev everybody's determination of what is a traumatic experience is personal to them. You and I could experience the same thing and I might not think too much about it you may be completely traumatized. Of course, then we have our big traumas like betrayals and death, um, injury, being completely trapped somewhere, emotionally, mentally, physically, financially, all those kind of things can cause a lot of trauma as well. So when our trauma is stored, it creates this fear area within us and then we'll have fear reactions to it so we can fight so we can become really really defensive when we are triggered we don't want to deal with it we don't want to be confronted with it and we do not want other people to see it know about it or understand it better than ourselves so you'll have someone that is in fight mode and they're trying to avoid people knowing what's going on with them, they'll defend themselves as if they're under complete threat and it may be just someone giving them a suggestion or it may be someone just asking, are you okay? But they feel threatened within themselves that they're heading somewhere that they don't want to go. 
So when we're in flight mode, it is all about escaping, getting away from it, not feeling it, not being confronted with it. Then we have hide. We hide it from ourselves. We try to hide it from others. So we really want to bury that. We want that suppressed and left alone. Don't open Pandora's box kind of thing. Then we also have freeze. And that's the shutdown that I was talking about before. People just completely shut down. They just freeze. The emotions overwhelm them so much. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to respond. And they don't know where to go from there after it. And then there's also fawn where they'll use distraction and they'll try and make it about other people. You know, they'll compliment you or they'll do things, they'll appease other people to try and get away from what they're feeling. So the first step when you are triggered and regardless of what type of trigger that you've got. So acknowledge that when you are triggered, it's a reaction. There's not a lot of thought gone into it. It's just this event that's happening that's why sometimes people really panic because they feel out of control that it's taken them somewhere they don't want to go so that that Welcome rises and that thank anxiety you for being part of the adventure the panic like and subscribe if you want more information about heading somewhere reconnecting that they with don't your soul want to go to. recovering from you know, your wounds some tips and to help you deal rejuvenating with them. acknowledge your zest for that life. it is a reaction Today, okay, even if I want to talk about triggers, what you're Sarah, one of our to, fellow listeners, try to has actually sent me an email saying up, sometimes that you are I don't safe. even know why I'm triggered. Remind yourself that you're and safe. Sometimes what do you I do get clients when to you are triggered. Look where your feet so are. she's just you finished reading where your um, spirituality, are. evolution, okay, um, and awakened consciousness, and she what she loved from um, it in my was office, it gave her questions um, to ask herself when she felt triggered. So we're gonna. Do a, a little exploration into waiting for the children to come home from school and finish why school. We are triggered. My feet are on the ground. So when we're looking I at safe. triggers, what are because they? Because when you're reacting, the first question, and your basically sense they're of an involuntary reaction, the and it recalls so give the traumatic experience to or identify that you the are other safe. thing that I'm at home is that I'm in the kitchen, running I'm through a particular filter. No so from our me, past, different I'm things safe. have happened and Whatever we've created that these filters from them. To remind and yourself it's the way we start in a safe environment. Everyone that has will start to triggers. quell some We're all, of the panic. There's not a person on the planet that isn't to triggered by something. Now, how, how we feel? deal with it what is, it is very that I'm feeling different. Don't panic if someone if is emotionally know. overwhelmed, Just ask their ability to deal with a trigger is going to be very different to someone that has emotional intelligence and has realised what triggered me, that their past is now feeling anger, biting at their heels, so to speak. And by you being honest about what you are feeling, and even being honest about not knowing so when we are why triggered, you're feeling it, it can be you're actually starting like I said, to traumatic experiences, but it can also be fear induced. Where honesty with we yourself, we can play mind is games becoming with important. ourselves, and sometimes because when we what are we fear happening, triggered. so we can fear being and judged. We can be really, you know, we can past fear events humiliation. Head, we can have flashbacks. Do. We often All those start kind of fearing. So we're, our if we're own having an body reactions, you know, and we start to start to feel nervous about start having a fear. We can start reacting to our that we're about to be humiliated or just humiliated. Sensations, and then and we that also start to can really cause panic us that our emotions are now controlling emotional us reactions. And now we're everyone's going a little out bit different control. to what can in that happen. First Some step, people, it's a shutdown. Remind yourself that you're safe. They just switch you're off going to and they go internal. Some of the pressure, and it's like they're held in these trance. other fears. Other people and beliefs explode are going to be kicking up, and they can act it out. And, and they if you're having yelling at the dog, definitely or the children. yourself. For nothing you really yesterday, well, whatever you're intrusive. yelling at today, didn't bother you, yourself. but because okay. you've been triggered about something else, wherever that is, you're actually trying to get that you energy know, I'm out. I'm in the car. And I'm what you're doing is park. releasing I'm waiting it. to Generally, leave. I'm somewhere you think you're safe. I don't leave until I'm ready. So I don't have to do anything have no power. They're safe. You just remind Animals, yourself of whatever pets, it is you need to And, be, you know, you hear the old expression, go and kick a tree. So if you can identify can't kick you back. That's good. Triggers, be about it. We have and lots even if you don't of know different what to reactions. Deal with in that moment, go, we can, okay, they can recognize that I'm angry. Habits I'm habits not sure well. why. Like I said, that that's when we're build emotionally up, triggered, building blocks of self on us, we go and eat. When we go we out go of integrity from ourselves, and we're in our you know, fear, look for a substance. 
unrelated that is going to the reality to shut of what we're experiencing out. in that moment. So there's all different we create kinds of an internal reactions confusion. that we can have, and then we don't know what to, to do with that emotionally confusion. triggered. So when and if we I go back to triggered, Sarah's question, we're where trying she said, to alleviate half the, time I don't the confusion even know we're feeling. What triggered and me? You do that, and that goes into can a identify. different kind of event. And as you well. remind yourself that you've Whatever got time we don't later really on deal to with, work out we don't what escape. this is. Hindsight we suppress is a beautiful it. thing. And in my you can words, find out and a lot of spirituality side of it backwards, is we hold it in our system. And so I refer in the to that moment, as our soul's it's about, it's about pulling your own attention, so our emotional baggage, to what is going to and cause there's you to belief feel safe. systems, there's fears, Emotional there's mindsets, safe, there's as all, well as I mean, I know our brain is doing when a lot of things as well. When you that you feel you're ready to be self-reflective about what's triggered you, try not to hit yourself with just judgment and shame reactions, where you're constantly telling yourself there's something wrong with you, or you're not good enough or you're the problem, or, you know, really ruminating on the things that you don't like. That's not self-reflection, but it's something that when you are triggered, it comes in there, sneaks in on all of us. It can take us a long way from the actual issue. So when you pull your attention back, treat yourself like you would your best friend or your children, or whoever it is that you care for in this world, treat yourself the same way and make that the benchmark of how you interact with yourself. Self-judgment just pushes you further into the emotional pit. It doesn't do anything. It's a way of self-punishing because you feel out of control. So if you can identify the feeling, acknowledge that you're safe and you start being reflective, do it as the observer. Do it with kindness, compassion. Remind yourself, a lot of reminding going on here, remind yourself that you're looking to find a solution and I'm going to say something, you're going to go, what? It's not about fixing it. See, what people try to do is control themselves to fix the problem. So what they do is try and replace the behaviour. Okay, if I believe this, will it stop it? If I do this, will it stop it? If I numb out this feeling, will it stop it? It might give you a bit of relief. It's temporary. All this stuff is in the suitcase. Somewhere along the line, that Pandora's box is going to open. It's going to come back. So give yourself permission to say, okay, I can identify this is an issue and I want to explore it and put yourself in the driver's seat. So what is this about? Is it about my childhood? Is it about, you know, and if, you, if it's a traumatic event that has come back up and you're experiencing the flashbacks, give yourself permission to really ask yourself, what is it about that event? that I haven't been able to walk free of? What is the chain that is holding me to that event? And you'll find it's a fear or a belief system or it's so traumatising that you can't believe that it happened. And then when you get to there, it's about accepting what you have experienced You've already experienced it. You've already done the hard yards. So it's really accepting it, not because you deserved it, not because you're unworthy of any other type of experience, but it has already occurred. Well, a lot of time what people do is they're fighting their own reality. They're trying to deny their own reality. So you're either fighting it or trying to deny it. And to walk free of this, sometimes you've got to walk into the experience. Helps if you've got someone that's there to help you. You know, don't feel like you, if it's overwhelming, you don't feel like you have to do it on your own. Seek help. And sometimes what you need is to give yourself permission to just go, that has occurred and it was wrong. I didn't deserve it. But when we have had traumatic experiences, the experience happened, right? 
And then our reaction within ourselves to that experience is what is the traumatic ex- ex- internal experience. It is what is creating the trauma. The experience has happened. What I'm doing with it now is traumatizing myself. And when we can't process that, a lot of the time when we have experiences that do cause trauma, if we feel supported, if we feel loved, if we feel heard, those experiences will always be bad experiences, but they drift on and they just become something that I've experienced and I was lucky, had all this compassionate people around me and I felt my self-compassion, all the rest of it. When you feel unsupported, and it may not be because of the people around you not supporting you, you may be so far in your own trauma that you can't feel it. You don't, you know, people can be supporting you and you don't realize it. So there's all, there's no one size fits all with this. But a lot of the time when I've been working with people, and remember, I'm just coming from an energetic position of what I can read of the energy. A lot of the time it's because their control has been broken. Their expectations didn't come to fruition. What they expected could never happen has just happened, which means my control is broken. And we start panicking that we can't trust ourselves within the life experiences we're having. And a lot of that causes a chain around us that holds all our traumatic experiences to us. Fear is another way that we hold the chain to those experiences. We fear that if we are not hypervigilant, it will happen again because they're unprocessed emotions and experiences and beliefs and fears and all the rest of it within us. We're trying to keep ourselves safe from it, so we're hypervigilant on is that, a, is that a sign? Is that a red flag? Is that something that's happening? Where am I now? Where's this going? And that can create the panic where we feel triggered and we don't understand why, but it's because we're trying to protect ourselves from experiencing that again and we've stayed on red alert for too long. And that creates a lot of issues for people. Every person's triggers and history is unique to them. And there's nothing wrong with us when we feel triggered. It just is telling us there's something unresolved within us. Something needs looking at. Something needs addressing. And if we give ourselves permission to go in the exploration, then all of a sudden it can be a door opener to walk through. The, the, it's never easy. But to walk through the, the trauma that we have and the, the false belief systems and the parts of ourselves that are still wounded so that we can take those chains off. I hope, Sarah, that's helped you. I hope it's given you some information when we are dealing with emotional triggers and there's a big debate whether you know emotional trigger warnings are of an advantage or disadvantage because when we have a trigger warning and we just stay in avoidance of what it is that we don't want to hear about experience learn about then we stay in avoidance which means that those you know, we're wrapping more chains around Pandora's box and holding it closer to us. You know, the suitcase is going to get heavier, however you want to visualise what it is that you're carrying. And sometimes we need to see exactly what it is that we fear to be able to process it. So, you know, whether trigger warnings are working for us or not working for us, is something that we should allow ourselves when we feel safe, you've got to feel safe, permission to go and explore all these things that are unresolved within us. And sometimes doing the hard yards, it is unbelievable freedom on the other side. We have to make the choice that we're worth going through 
the hard yards to do that. Our alternative is to keep carrying what is unresolved within ourselves. And for me, from a spiritual point of view, that is part of the journey of life, that we are all got these triggers and they do affect us. They affect the way we see the world. They affect the way we see ourselves. They affect the way we interact with other people, how we interact with ourselves, what we think we deserve. These things that are unresolved, these emotions that we have trapped within us, they are altering our perception. So it is worth the hard yards to change our perception. Anything unresolved within us, whether you want to call it your shadow self or emotional baggage or any, you know, any of the catch cries, it's stopping you from living your best life. And I know that sounds like a catch cry too because that's what you know everyone says. But if you're lugging around the wounds and you haven't processed them, it causes you to feel less than who you really are. And that's why it is important to deal with the truth of what is unresolved so you can understand the truth of who you are. Now it's time for Flip the Book and I'm just going to take the top book which is Breaking Free and I'm going to randomly open it up. Where my eye falls is Forgiveness. Forgiveness of yourself is often a way of discovering the falsity of believing you are unworthy of respect and frequently exposes how you are using shame to cultivate negative beliefs about yourself. Shame is the belief that there is something wrong with you. If you are carrying shame because another abused you, it is not your shame. Being an abuse victim means the shame belongs to the abuser, not the abused. Shame is a resolvable emotion, especially when you unconditionally love yourself and value and accept the truth of innocence. We have many experiences where we did not deserve them. We are victims. But to stay in that victimhood is what's going to cause you a lot more trauma. Forgiveness of yourself, not if you've been abused, not for, for being abused, but forgiving yourself for your reaction to it, for beating yourself up, for not feeling good enough, for believing you deserved it. That's what you're trying to forgive yourself for. And let the shame fall wherever the abuse started. And it's never the innocent. It's not the victim. So when we're triggered, a lot of the time it's because we do feel that we were unfairly and unjustly treated. I know I'm going back to the indifference, but as humans, we really react to people's indifference to us. And every abuse, regardless of whether it's narcissistic, childhood abuse, or just someone being mean and nasty, bullying, criticizing, putting down, what we react to is that person's indifference towards us and indifference scares us as it should but when we become indifferent to ourselves we create a lot more trauma within ourselves like I said before trauma is a reaction within ourselves the event occurred it can be a terrible experience it's a traumatic experience which means there's an internal reaction to it, one that we find very difficult to process. When we come indifferent to ourselves, we hold that pain, we hold that fear, we, and we build negative self-beliefs or adopt the ones that we're being told to us, and we start determining who we are from that place of indifference to our natural selves. Just hearing that out loud, you should go, yeah, that system is not going to work. That is going to cause me to really start to self-loathe, feel second class, all those kind of things that hurt us. So when you are being triggered, one of the questions I ask 
Is it because of someone else's indifference towards me? If you're journaling, ask yourself the question, when was the last time someone was indifferent to me and what was my reaction to it? Where they did not care, showed no empathy, compassion for how what they were doing or saying and how it affected me. I think you'll be very surprised with what you come up with. I want to thank everyone for listening and please like and subscribe. We want you to be part of building the channel. Remember, if you have any questions, um, I'm more than happy to look at them and see if we can get you an answer.